happens every time. You get a beautiful XPS 15. It's better than all the laptops. And then six years later, it's the same damn thing. Here's the new one. Has it changed? I don't know. We're gonna find out. It's actually only been three years since the XPS 15 was completely refreshed, but in computer terms, that's basically an eternity. Okay, let's play a game here. Play a game, guys. Which one's the new one? Uh, <laughs> the left. Nope, this is the old one. <laughs> that's pretty unchanged. Okay, let's, let's see. Can we spot any differences? So the new one isn't covered in my fingerprints. The carbon fiber on the new one looks a little bit different and the texture is more, has more of a weavy feel to it. Updated Windows key, it's now a square instead of a not quite square square. One thing that I know is different is the camera. Can I physically tell though? Nope. <laughs> None of that really matters though because the XPS 15 is still essentially the best looking and best feeling laptop you can buy. Except for maybe a MacBook. We also get for a charger, 130 watts. That's, I'm guessing the same. Charger's the same too. Uh, do we just do the whole video just talking about how it's exactly the same as the old one? It's better. It, yeah, it is better. Now, the problem with the old XPS 15, the XPS 13 Plus came out and the processor and that's faster. It's just kind of embarrassing for everyone that has one of these guys when someone can walk along with a guy that's this big and be faster than you. Like, look at the size difference here. So much smaller, in a lot of ways, kind of cooler looking, if I'm honest, like a bit of a sexier machine. So we're gonna test this one out. We're gonna see just how fast it is. Oh, Dell, what are you doing? They sent us a 16 gigabyte model, so I would personally rather have 32 because I use way too many tabs, but whatever. We also have Wi-Fi 6E. Oh, I don't know if that's legal to use in Canada. Uh, maybe don't mention that. <laughs> We also have an RTX 3050 Ti and an i7 12700H. So that's 14 cores, 20 threads. I am a bit curious though. 4800 mega transfers per second. Okay, so this RAM has to be DDR5. That's probably a good little lift in performance there. Feels like the hinge has a bit more grip to it than before. Oh, another thing, the audio drivers on this XPS 15 have just been complete dog ever since I've installed it in Windows 11. If Crab Rave just runs on the new one and like sounds okay, excellent. Okay, what I really wanna do here is set up all three of these computers, have a big old Cinebench drag race. But before that, I need to tell you about dbrand so you can tell which one's the new one. Also, it'll probably make it 5% faster. It won't. Will it, Mark? Probably. Okay, what do we have here? Oh, sweet Jesus. Look at this. Okay, so uh, there's that. Do we really not have any like semi-reasonable ones? Nope, you gotta use naked Linus. I'm going to put this Linus on the old one and give it to one of the new writers. <laughs> okay, that's not quite right either. Sweet Jeebus. Fucked it up. Now we get attempt number two. Okay, this one's going way better. Why a scorpion? Is there a reason that there's scorpions? They're badass. Are they? Okay, that one went on way better. Yes, how do you attract a mate? <laughs> oh, let me tell you. So in case you've been hiding under a rock for the past couple years, dbrand makes very expensive stickers for your devices. They also support newer devices like the MacBook Air M2 and, well, I guess the XPS 13 Plus. Is that what we have over here? Yeah, instead of something like this, you can get an actual good color like this. Or uh, their grip cases. I use that on my phone. It, it's actually just like the best phone case. Check them out down below at dbrand.com slash shortlinus. One thing that I wanna shout out though, you're able to plug in the charger on both sides, right and left. That can be just so great from time to time. Like you'll just want your laptop to be somewhere on like a small desk when you're at a hotel or something. and. It can be a mild convenience. <laughs> uh, the randomness makes it even funnier than Linus one, just looking up and seeing the <laughs> scorpion. I do kind of love it. <laughs> right? It's badass. Thermals. Ultra performance. There we go. All right, Cinebench time. We'll start the old 15 first. Now, 
13 and 14, are you both going? I'm surprised even in Ultra Performance that none of these have made a sound yet. Oh, okay, 11,600. 10,700, okay, so the old XPS 15 did quite well there. And the new one gets 10,900, which is, uh, yeah, it got beat by the old one. Jeez, if the old one's faster, that'll be friggin' embarrassing. Uh, BRB. All right, let's try that again. 11,600 to beat. CPU's currently running at 2.9 gigahertz. Kind of wish it was a bit faster than that. There we go, all right. 13,480. Absolutely killed the other two. That's fantastic, because I thought I was going to have to have a really awkward phone call with Dell there. Um, glad we avoided that. <laughs> First of all, it's a little bit on the heavy side. I believe it's 4.2 pounds, is that correct, Bell? Yeah. The IO also is not amazing, but very livable. So on the left side, we have two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Over on the right side, we have headphone microphone combo, SD card reader. This one's super fast, love it. And also a USB type C over on the side, it's not Thunderbolt. I personally think that the trackpad on this is best if you disable enhanced pointer position. So that's getting rid of your mouse acceleration. And then we'll go to touchpad. Take the cursor speed from five down to four. This thing is really nice and big. So you don't need to have like the highest sensitivity ever on your trackpad. It's large enough. You're not going to run out of space anyway. As for the keyboard, it's probably the best keyboard that's on a laptop right now. Just hands down, like compared to the one that's on the XPS 13 plus. This one right here is pretty good. Yeah, I just prefer the keyboard on the XPS 15 compared to the 13. The 13, you kind of have to like think a little bit because there's no space between the keys. They did dish it well. It, this is a good keyboard, but I just like the one on the 15 more. Do you know what display this is? I'm guessing based on just the blacks and stuff that this is the 4K-ish OLED. 3456 by 2160. It's such a strange resolution. So I guess that's 4K, but instead of extending it because it's a 16 by 10 display, they just cut off the sides. It's odd. One thing Dell does with the XPS 15 that I absolutely love is include this little dongle here. It's just simple HDMI and USB type A but it comes in just such a nice little form factor, very easy to huck in your bag. Love that it's included. One thing I'm really curious about this OLED display is the gaming performance. The LCD on the old one was just really slow. Like it was very clear that it was tuned to give you the best picture possible at the expense of some latency. Okay, how do we think this is gonna do 1080p medium settings in Valheim? I'm hoping for 45 FPS. Do you guys think it'll get it? I say 20. You're saying 20, Mark? Have sure. some faith. Look at this sticker. You can't only get, okay, I'm getting 15 FPS. Um, oh, it's in 4K right now. That would do it. Okay, let's drop the, yeah. This is not a 4K gaming machine. That is for sure. There we go. 42 FPS while we're screen recording. Oh man, OLED displays, like for gaming especially, just look so frigging good. Like. The way that I have detailed down here in the grass, I can see like all the individual strands. And then like we have these super bright little bits of light and all of it just, oh, it looks so good. It also demolishes your battery. If you have like, you know, bright stuff on your display, 4K, it'll absolutely destroy it. But at the same time, you know, looks real good while doing it. <laughs> this also just feels so much better than that LCD display. Like, I don't know that I would love to game on this, but I could, which is more than I could say before in a lot of situations. This is legitimately very good though for a business laptop, especially one that is screen recording at the same time. Do we try Horizon 5? Continue with reset. All right, high settings. Let's see how this goes. Why is it reading out the menu? I, I half regret last time that I got an XPS 15 asking for the LCD. It just can look like crap because the sub pixels and the digitizer don't quite line up and you get this really weird screen door effect. Whereas this right here, if I open up a notepad, yeah, I can start seeing the sub pixels like right here and no one uses the laptop like that. 
As a bonus, I believe that the OLED on the XPS 15 also gets a tiny bit more battery than the 4K LCD. Although of course, if you really want battery life, get the 1080p model. It just is so much better for battery life. Okay, Jake, you've been using the Apple Liquid Retina bullshit for a while. Come and take a look at this. Now, let me know if you think it's comparable because I believe that one's way brighter. Yeah, yeah that looks good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very nice display. <laughs> All right, here we are, 1080p high settings. We're getting 63, 58 FPS, right around 60. I am honestly very surprised that it's doing this well, given, you know, it's just a 3050 Ti in here. It's, it's a good card, but sometimes it doesn't do great. The VRAM can really be a problem in games like Forza. That lets us know that this display is freaking incredible. Holy jeez. Now we just need... Crab rave. Sounds quite good. Compared to the old one. The new one sounds just a tiny bit better. And I'm 90% sure that's because the drivers on Windows 11 have been just god awful on this thing right here. Let's see, OLED versus LCD display. If I'm honest, they look pretty much identical. So on camera, the OLED looks way better? Yeah, way less better. Huh. Well, I'm curious way about that. Can you, can you bring your MacBook over here? Yeah. Oh, we can see what Jake's recommendations are here on YouTube. I've been thinking of retiring. <laughs> <laughs> you guys tell me which one you think this is. I think that the MacBook might just have a V curve. I don't even know if it's actually better. Let's see here. Can I go in and just base boost this? Ooh, never mind. Okay, yeah, the MacBook's better. <laughs> what I'm really surprised of though is that the screen on the XPS is just very noticeably much more better. Like, look at this. The color tone isn't quite the same between the two. The XPS just has so much more color and detail in dark scenes, like holy frig. I played around with it a little bit. Dell has their Premier Color app, and I would highly recommend going in here instead of leaving it on Vibrant, taking it to either Cinema or Photo. Even at 9300 Kelvin, the Mac is still a little bit bluer, but I'm just shocked by the colors of the XPS compared to the MacBook. Cause this thing's supposed to be what, like a thousand nits? The XPS is 400 nits. If I'm honest, I was expecting for the max display to be just, especially judging from the specs, noticeably better. Whereas the XPS, I like it more. I think it's a better display. <laughs> I'm shocked. I'm glad we tested that. <laughs> Webcam, oh, that's one thing that they did. Apparently they fixed it a little bit. Oh yeah, it's definitely better. The difference in the webcam quality between these is just remarkable. So they are both 720p webcams. The difference is that on the old XPS 15, they only had a single camera for IR and video recording. So in order to have your Windows facial recognition, it has IR blasters that like, you know, 3D scans your face or whatever. It uses the IR camera for that. On the new one, they broke it out. So they have an IR camera and a normal camera. Now every digital camera is technically an IR camera, except that you put a filter over it to filter out those wavelengths and just toss them away because you don't need them and it can lead to some pretty strange stuff. So like you can see here, there's kind of like a bunch of blotchiness and also in some spots kind of like weird purpley noise. Whereas the colors are just so much better on this one right here that has a simple IR filter on it. It looks so much better, holy frick. <laughs> The one thing I'm really sad about with this XPS 15 is that it only has 16 gigabytes of RAM. And for me personally, that's not enough. Let's change that. Actually, we're not gonna be able to change it. We don't have any DDR5 sodium around here, but uh, I'll show you that you can change it. <laughs> oh. Don't try this at home. Nah, try it at home. Go for it. How much is this thing? 2949 Canadian. Oh, Canadian, whatever. 2253 USD, that's pretty reasonable. Look at this piece, all aluminum. 
Do be careful. If you open one of these up, you can actually cut your fingers on it because they have it machined so nicely. Look at that. SK Hynix DDR5 Sodium. Oh, shit. I don't think I turned this off. It's probably not very happy right now. You have your two RAM slots right there. You can put two SSDs in here. We have our nice big cooler. I do really wish that Dell would swap it to a vapor chamber. That would be the difference between this being like, yeah, to being like, oh yeah. We also have our 86 watt hour battery. Uh, your mileage will vary. My biggest problem with the battery in this is the Windows modern standby. It is one of the worst things that Windows has ever done. And that's like saying a lot. This is not a Dell exclusive problem. I've had it in the Lenovo laptops, HP laptops, Asus laptops, they've had the problem as well, where it's just like a 2016 razor blade and you take it out of your backpack and it's hot as the sun and your battery's dead and you're really mad about it. Microsoft, you haven't made a good laptop in such a long time. Like, come on, you improved Windows so much when you started the Surface devices and now you've just kind of left everyone out to dry with Modern standby is so bad. That's my rant about it. Otherwise, the XPS 15, great laptop. I love it. Um, I'm probably gonna use this one once Crucial sends us some more memory and I can upgrade to 32 gigabytes. Have a good evening, bye. <laughs>